Now with front tire removed, that is a perfect fit and more so. I don't even need to move that front seat forward anymore and I can just stick this, well, just go right there. Hey crew, I've got the key to this Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo and today we're gonna see what it's like to live with. I'll start by unplugging it where it was charging up overnight. And the moment I did unplug it, this charge port door closed up, but I have to show you this. You just swipe your finger under this tab to open or close it. It's a small thing, but I think it's cool. Now checking out spacing in my driveway, I've got it parked a few inches from the edge, sitting next to a new Ford Explorer Timberline Edition that my wife is reviewing, where the tires are hovering just off the edge of the driveway. And that gives me a lot of room to walk between the two vehicles and wheel a stroller, a double wide stroller when duty calls. And then merely by approaching the Taycan, will the doors unlock and the door handles deploy. Opening up this door, I can go one notch, two, maybe even three notches before touching the Explorer. And that's such a wide access point to make it easy to get inside the Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. Hello cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this day in the life video with this vehicle and this is an all electric sporty wagon that just sounds like the best of all worlds in one but today I'm going to find out if that's true by doing some activities with it. I'll start by getting coffee then I'm going to try to squeeze my bicycle in the back for some cycling, I'll do some fun driving later and then tomorrow very early in the morning Mobile Mama and I, my wife and I, are going to go see a preview of the Mazda CX-70 so you kind of get a video within a video on this one. That's that's all ahead, but first I have to find a spot for the items I've brought with me, including my large water bottle, which, oh my gosh, it just kind of fits in the cup holder, so I don't have to do anything else. But if I needed to, it could also squeeze inside the door if I didn't want it here interrupting my flow with my elbow. I've got a key fob that could just, I suppose, go in the cup holder. There's another spot here where a smartphone might go, but I want to wirelessly charge this thing. So I'm gonna open up the console, it's annoying if that doesn't just stay up, that's odd. Um, but I do have a wireless charging slot. This is really irritating. That it can squeeze into like that. And you can see I already have this filled with some GoPros and batteries and my mics, but that kind of fills up that area. Not a lot of storage there. Sunglasses, maybe those just go right there, that's fine. And then my wallet, which, yeah, it's just gonna go on top like that. We're good to go. And actually the vehicle is already on because the moment I sit inside it with the key fob on me and put my foot on the brake, it turns on and it's been charging up overnight. So it's got 100% of the battery capacity on access here. And that gives us uh, an estimated range of 231 miles. And the EPA rates this vehicle at 233 miles. And in terms of charging overnight from a level two outlet like I had, it takes about 10 and a half hours. <laughs> down into drive on that and easing on out of here. I do have some curb ramps to help make it over the gutter in my driveway, but, but if I didn't, I could go here, that took a second, and I could raise the chassis height, lift the nose to clear that. Here on my way to get coffee, I just realized I actually needed to turn back there, but this gives us a chance to listen to what the turn signal sounds like. which is fine, sort of a loud noise. And I'll also get to test the turning radius here with a U-turn. Wheel is cranked. Oh my. That's lovely. Very tight turning circle. Now let's just say that uh, Bobby Boy has just cut me off. What's the horn sound like if I need to alert Bobby to his mistake? Hmm. It's too friendly. Too friendly. Bob needs to know what he's done wrong. While on this coffee pilgrimage, I'm doing a lot of stopping and then starting again at both stoplights and stop signs. I want to spend less effort. So I'm going to turn on the braking regeneration system and see what sort of difference that makes. There's really like no slowing that happens, at least no noticeable slowing. I mean, just the smallest amount of it. Not all that helpful to me. But what is helping me out is this ride quality. This is Porsche's sportiest Taycan and it's still so darn smooth. 
broken bits of road, sewer drain covers, it's whatever. And here I am at one of my favorite local coffee shops. Hola, adios. Alas, I am in business. Camera system, surround view, always helpful. And I love that the door mirrors tilt down when you back up. So I can get real close to the curb without scraping these big, beautiful 21 inch wheels. Of course, the spot would be a problem if I had a passenger because they couldn't get out through the gates, but um, I don't, so we're fine. And I don't even need to hit that button to turn it off. It's the moment I locked the car. It's off. All right, got my coffee. Decaf, of course, because caffeine turns me into an over-energized nightmare and something else, which I'll talk about in a sec. First, I thought of a practical question mark with the Taycan Sport Turismo. It's so low slung, you'd wonder if the door would clear a curb and I'm pleased to report that it does. But tell us about this mystery good, Miles. Glad you asked. Hola Adios has some delicious breakfast sandwiches made with buttery biscuits. This one's called Bacon and Friends and uh, Lord knows I need some friends. So, so I chose this one. Yeah, it's, it's good. <sighs> Makes the lack of friends hurt a little less. Oh, it's a good thing I just ate that sandwich because I wouldn't be able to get a snack here at home considering I just locked myself out. I plan to come here and change clothes and get ready for cycling, but uh, apparently this morning when I left, the door sealed itself and I don't have a key and my wife isn't close. So uh, I'm gonna have to pivot. And instead of going for a bike ride right now, which I'll do later, I'm going to take the Taycan GTS Sport Turismo out for some fun driving and hopefully cheer myself up. And the very first thing I'm going to do to lift my spirits is launch control, a real world zero to 60 demonstration, if you will. So my race box is set up over here to record. I had to crack the windows a little bit to get some reception. To prepare for launch, I have to go into Sport Plus and then just hold my foot on the brake, pin the throttle, Launch is ready. Let go. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> there's 60 in 3.43 seconds. Holy underwear. Yeah, there won't be many cars that I would line up against at a stoplight and worry that I wouldn't be quicker off the line. <laughs> but everyone knows you buy a Porsche not for how quickly it moves in a straight line, but how well it negotiates curves. <laughs> And in particular, this GTS, whose steering is so finely tuned. The brakes have great feel and amazing bite, and you need them when a vehicle weighs over 5,000 pounds like this. The rear wheel steering system cuts us into corners. The turn in is so sharp the body incredibly flat and the steering is just magic so much feel <laughs> this is worth taking the long way home from work or spending one of my weekend days driving to a road that's worthy of this car it would be so wasted to just sit in traffic and not exploit it on the weekends A Porsche EV is unlike every other EV. Porsche Dynamics blended with electric efficiency. <laughs> Fused with it. Not trying to artificially create enjoyment in the driver's seat, but having it feel inherent. Yeehaw! The Taycan has had its exercise and it's about time I have some of my own. Now that the house is unlocked, my wife came home and is bailing me out, I can change into my bike wear. Okay, I'm back home. I've got my bike ready. I'm ready. And now I have to get the bike inside the car. How are we going to make that work? First, I've got to take out these charging cables, which are clamped to these mounting points here on the two sides. 
And I don't think these are going to fit in the storage cubby that's here. Nope. So let's try the front trunk, which opens conveniently enough with the key fob in my pocket by just swiping my hand like that. And then lifting up, and that looks like it is perfectly sized to hold the charging cables. I think I probably need to move this seat forward. The way in. That's one side. And I want to see, can I reach in? I can and get to the other. Okay, everything's down. Looks like a good amount of space, but I do want to protect the upholstery with some towels. All right, moment of truth. Carefully. Yeah, this dimension is going to be a problem. I'm going to have to take off the front tire. Now with front tire removed, that is a perfect fit and more so. I don't even need to move that front seat forward anymore and I can just stick this well, just go right there. And it's a good thing I can fit it inside the vehicle because there is no hitch receiver on the Tycon to attach a bike rack there. So I would need one to go on the roof as an alternative, but you don't need to. You can fit two bikes in there, no problem. Almost forgot my helmet and water bottle. These could just, I guess, sit loose in the vehicle, but why do that when you've got these deep side cubbies to just hold them securely? Nice. And in case you're curious, my visibility isn't compromised at all with the bike back there. You just have that blind spot at the C pillar, but that's what blind spot monitoring is for. I got my bike back in one piece and now I'm ready for my ride. See you tomorrow for part two. Welcome back to the Tycon. This is day two and welcome to LA traffic as Mobile Mama and I make our way to the Mazda CX-70 preview. It's gonna be north of LA. We had to get up early this morning and it was too early for the color of that jacket. It looks great with the It car. does look great. Just, well, with the car? You think Christmas is the right color combo for this I one? I like it, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was real early. I charged it up overnight, so we had a fresh 230 miles of range. This is going to be enough range for us to get to and from our destination here, hopefully. If not, we gotta fast charge it, but it should be fine. But it's been a pretty nice commute so far. I mean, Mo Mama and I don't really have a commute, but this would be a simulated commute, and the Taycan GTS has been pretty smooth. What do you think? Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm comfortable. I think the s seats are a bit snug for me. The bolsters yeah. are just like holding me. They're always aggressive. Close. But I mean, the padding's decent. Like, oh, yeah. I don't feel like nice. they're too firm. I think if I was sitting in for a long time, like hours and hours, I might need a little uh, break, but they, they're right. so adjustable. It's got like 18 ways of adjustment for the seat. So you can find a comfortable seating position. I'm right now using the adaptive cruise control system, which is handy because it does stop and go. So fully stopping here, still don't have to put my, put my foot on the throttle. It'll just like pick back up again. Uh, I do have to keep my hand on the wheel. It just has that lane keep system. It's not like a, not a steering assist, at least as far as I've been able to tell. So it requires a little bit more attention than some of these systems, but the adaptive cruise is really handy in this. Do you feel like it's quiet in here? Now granted, we're just sitting in traffic, but what do you yeah, think? Yeah, it's been quiet. I mean, I definitely can, oh. I forgot I about that screen. screen. I completely forgot about that. Forgot? Is it cool? Do you think you'd use it? Considering you know, the get, infotainment is like maybe three you know inches this way. I get motion sick. Oh, that's true. So, yeah, so you wouldn't. I don't use screens. Okay, so you're not maybe the best use case for this, but I mean, like, would you use like the cockpit thing's kind of cool? You can see the the to speed and the G4. Yeah, the and see, yeah, we're just sitting in traffic. Also, if you got bored, you could use the, you could play with these panels above our head. You can have it be you like, play with them. look at, look up. Oh, it changes. Uh huh. Oh, oh that's neat. That's pretty cool. That is cool. If we had our kids in the car and they were older, they would still have to ask us how to do this. Never mind. Okay. But it's just. We a, could show our, our, Oh, we could show them. That's right. Entertain yeah. them. Yeah. That's I mean, something for we could like do. Five seconds. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, as a commuter, coming back to that, like, this would be a very pleasant way to get to and from work. Feels spacious and reasonably comfortable and uh, quiet. And here it is the Mazda CX 70. It's slotting in between the CX 50 and the new CX 90. It shares a lot with the CX 90, including the styling. You see those uh, slab sided doors there. This one has these two tone 21 inch blacked out wheels. This like aluminum finish on the outside. They look great. Checking out the rear end. 
It's got that same sort of roundedness to the back end like the CX-90. They haven't officially announced the engine specs yet, but it's gonna have the same 3.3 liter turbo inline six as the CX-90, probably with up to 340 horsepower like the CX-90. And inside, look at these seats. Mazda just upgrading it all over the place with a leather feel. It's got a digital gauge cluster and a head-up display and a 12.3 inch infotainment that's not a touchscreen unless you're using the wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Otherwise, you'll use the dial down here and some hotkeys. There is a volume knob, always happy to see that. And then this trim is not gloss black, which makes me so excited. And this panoramic sunroof. Let's look at the back seats. Look how wide these doors open. That makes it so easy to get in or load in car seats, in my family's case. Sun shades, one touch windows, wear that nice burgundy leather on the doors. Hopping in, behind my own seat at six feet. Look at all that knee room, the foot pockets are nice and large, thigh support is great, headroom is solid as well. Got a third zone of climate here, two more USB-Cs, and these seats do slide a little bit forward and then back and they recline like that. This is nice. Tailgate comes up and we've already got some simulated items in here. DC outlet on the side. Oh, check this out. Power seat release. That's a first for Mazda and very convenient. Slide it all the way out to get access to these storage cubbies. And if you take this cubby out, then this is actually an insulated area that you could use as a cooler. I can't wait to drive it. If it drives anything like the CX-90, which it surely will, then it's going to be a serious segment foe. And here it is in white and in plug-in hybrid form. Again, don't know the official specs yet, but the CX-90's plug-in hybrid had a range of 26 miles? Just waiting. Oh, I like the crossbars. Those make this look really good. Well, it was great. We were efficient in our filming. We actually were so efficient that we've got a ton of time before we need to be home, so. I wouldn't say a ton. Well, you got some time. Yeah. What do you think about brunch? I'm famished. You're famished? Is yes. that what you said? Oh, yes. I want some desayuno. I had to go to the Spanish. Vamos a I had to go to the Spanish. All right, we're gonna get brunch. The Mazda peeps told us this place is good, Claudine's Kitchen Bake Shop. So let's check it out. You kept speaking in Spanish. You made me want Mexican breakfast food. Breakfast burrito, chilaquiles. It's gonna be good. Why are you upset? I didn't want two Mexican things. Well, that's pretty impressive. We drove 120 miles round trip. We started with 230 miles and we still have 116 miles left, not the 110, which it in theory could be. I did turn on the range drive mode for our highway driving, but usually highway consumption for EVs is more than just around town driving. The uh, Taycan holds its range very well. All right, we're back home and I figured this is a good time to show the practicality of the Taycan Sport Turismo, trying to put car seats into the back seats. So there are two sets of lower latch anchors, and then we've got three top tethers. We have lower latch anchor car seats, so we're gonna try to install them and uh, see how it works. All right, we got them installed, and Christina, was it really hard to get them in here or no? No, it was easy because the vehicle is low to the ground, so I was able to, you know, kind of hover over them. Yeah. And then also the latch points, the latch anchors are just covered by a little plastic piece, and yeah. then you just pop that These off. These little guys. Easily yeah, that accessible. was nice. I had, did have to move my seat forward a little bit, so let's sit in our seats yeah. and see if they're like uncomfortable. Okay, so my seat is like closer than I would like to be. The back angle's fine. I could deal with this, this would be fine. How about you? Mm. Ooh, yeah, your knees are like pressed yeah, up against there. It's uncomfortable. So the passenger seat, if you're taller, would not be mm -hmm. so ideal. As a driver, like this isn't horrible, but if I had to deal with this every day, it might be a deal breaker for me. When it comes to actually living with an electric vehicle, it always comes back to charging, the ease of charging and the total available range for folks. There's a potential hang up. But for me, at least how I've experienced this vehicle, even today, taking that long road trip and coming home, I still have plenty of range to go run whatever errands I need for my family. And as long as I'm plugging in this vehicle every night and getting like a 10 hour block to fully replenish the battery, I'll never need a fast charging station. But in the situation where I really had a heavy usage day, I'm gonna deplete the entire battery capacity. At least Porsche does make some accommodation because they provide three years of free fast charging at Electrify America stations. The only problem with that, at least in my experience, is that Electrify America fast charging stations, or really any of these fast charging stations, 
are not fully reliable, certainly not in the same way that you can pretty much guarantee that if you go to a gas station, most or if not all of the pumps are going to work every time. But if you go to an EA station and it's not working, most likely you're in a situation where you really need to top up that battery so you could be in trouble. Or in best case scenario, all the charging stations are working, they might still all be occupied. And then you're sitting there waiting for one to free up. But hey, at least as soon as they do free up, it'll take me less than a half hour to go from five to 80% charge. Thankfully, fast charging dependence doesn't pertain to me today. So I'm headed home and I'll see you guys again tonight when I summarize my thoughts on living with this Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. All right, crew, I've got the Taycan back out at night to pull together my thoughts on what it's like to live with this all electric, very sporty, wagon. At the beginning of this video, I wondered aloud whether the Taycan GTS Sport Turismo really could be the best of all worlds. Practical, efficient, fast. And after living with it, my conclusion is, with very few exceptions, it absolutely is. And what are those exceptions? Well, I prefer a higher level of regen braking as an option here. These sport bucket seats, are on the tighter side and even even though they're very adjustable some people are not going to fit well and finally if you have car seats installed then the front seat passengers can be a little bit cramped at least if they are on the taller side but here's the good news if those things aren't deal breakers for you like they wouldn't be for me then the Taycan GTS Sport Turismo specifically is spectacular to look at during the week and then enthralling to drive on the weekends. It's also smooth riding around town. It's quiet on the highway and regardless of environment, it's true to or even beating the estimated range. And then of course, that wagon shape does mean built-in practicality. I have loved living with this car and I'm going to be really sad when it's no longer taking up residence in my driveway. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV day in the life video and I'll see you again next time. Bye Tesla.